Now, I'm going to talk about um, the parable of the persistent woman. Uh, text is taken from um, Luke chapter 18. Chapter 18. Do not uh, lose heart. I'm going to read a scripture. Um, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying there was, a, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard men. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. Well, there was a judge in the parable and he did not fear God. He believed God's existence, but he didn't care God's judgment against sin. Inevitably, he um, didn't respect what God had made. He ignored God's commandment. He was a legal, legal expert, but he couldn't do what was right. This was not, uh, this is not a true story. It's a parable, but I think that there was a, uh, this kind of foolish judge in those days. But the same is true even today. And there are some legal experts who openly violate the cons constitution, constitution of the United States, the human evil have never changed in all ages. So the same thing is happening even today. And this judge was very cold and heartless. He had no compassion to the poor. But uh, this widow um, came to uh, see him. So often she asked him saying, sir, judge the one who accuses me and protect me. She boldly asked him again and again. And strangely, she was not punished, no matter how much she annoyed the judge. She had no money to buy him. Her weapon was only persistence. And verse four said, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continue coming she weary me. The judge finally yielded to her insistence. Uh, he investigated her case and executed uh, justice. Then he said, the Lord said, hear what the, un the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out every day and night to him, though he bears long before uh, with, with them. You know, we need uh, persistent prayer. Some say that uh, persistent prayer is presumptuous or rude. Others say that that is a lack of faith or a sign that we don't trust in God, God's goodness. But persistent prayer is biblical. It is okay to do it. It is acceptable to keep praying for the same thing until something happens? The answer is yes. Why? Why can we keep praying until something happens? Is God, is God because, is because of God is stubborn? Well, God listens 
to our prayers. He knows all our needs. Therefore, a constant prayer is not for arousing God, but when, why do we need to pray always? Why is persistent persistence sometimes demanded for the prayers to be answered? Well, that is because God wants to purify the motive of, of our prayers. If our prayers, if a prayer is not immediately answered, we may ask ourselves why. We think whether the prayer is selfish or superficial. We think whether the prayer is really pleasing God. But if our prayers are answered right away, right away, they would not think that our prayers is selfish or not. We would not feel the need of more information. As we continue to pray the same thing over and over again, we come to realize what God really wants and what we really need. The Colossians chapter four, verse two say, that, um, oh, sorry, uh, say that continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. First Peter four, seven, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayer. So we should be very serious in what we are praying. So what do you pray every day? I'm pretty sure that you have some specific request that you give to God every day, especially those who have children, have at least one or two very specific prayers that you want to do, present to God. You love your children so much that you want really give some, something very serious one uh, to God. Uh, Steps to Christ say that uh, unceasing prayer is the unbroken union of the soul with God so that life from God flows into your life and from, your, uh, from our life, purity and ho holiness flow back to God. Our persistent prayer is vital practice to our Christian life. It holds and it builds our good relationship with God. Now, I, I have one son, uh, he's now more than 30, you know. My wife looks very young, but no, she's not really young anymore. <laughs> we, my wife and I are both the same age. We are classmates in high school. So I always, my wife and I always pray for my son. I have only one son. Very specific request I give, I have to God. So those parents, the parents who have children, are something that really want um, to present to God. Lord, this is our request. Please hear our prayer. Now we should we should never give up you no know, praying, even the same same prayer every day, if it lasts for 
one year or two years, five years, 10 years. We should never give up. Just keep praying and praying and praying. And then God will appoint a very specific time for you that your, answer, your prayer will be answered. Now, hmm, I had a chance to hmm, read the, some testimony that are sent by the Adventist World Radio. I subscribed the, the Adventist, AWR, Adventist World Radio newsletter. And in the, just a few weeks ago, uh, a few months ago, there's this kind of very interesting uh, testimony that I read. It. Um, the one pastor wrote about uh, the sister Sally Jo in a, uh, in a newsletter. And she was a child, when she was a child, she was often taken by her grandmother to an Adventist church in the hometown in Oregon. But when she grew uh, up into her teens and she drifted away from God and left the house and she got a job uh, in a gas station near the military base. Since then, I think since then, well, before I think that the grandmother started to pray for, for the granddaughter every day. And one night at the party, uh, Sally Jo uh, met a very handsome man and she enjoyed his company. And one night when she was walking home after the night, one night, one, one morning, I think, after the night shift, the following day, she was stopped by that handsome man and he offered her ride. She accepted and jumped into his Volkswagen. But as they reached her apartment, she was so surprised that uh, he just passed by the apartment and he went into the highway. And he turned off the highway into a very isolated place. Then he stopped the car and ordered the Sally Joe um, out of the car. And she looked at his cold look in the eyes and she knew that her life was very in, in, very in danger. It had started to rain already and she remembered the God of her grandmother. And she began to pray like she had never prayed before. And then suddenly, you know, one thought came to her mind and she asked, why don't you come to my apartment? Because it's very cold outside. And the idea seems to be uh, pleasing in the, the man and he agreed. But what he didn't know that um, she lived uh, with her girlfriend in the apartment and her boyfriend was a police officer. So as soon as the car stopped in front of the apartment, she got out of the car and ran towards the apartment, yelling the officer's name. Then as she reached the, apart the entrance, apartment entrance, the door just opened and then the uh, abductor, you know, caught her and uh, this ab abductor you know, saw the police officer in front of him. Then he turned around, he ran away. And uh, since that incident, the months went by and then Sally Jo uh, heard the news on the TV that that guy 
was arrested for killing more than 30 women, more than 30 women. And then years went by and Sari Jo remembered the God of her grandmother, how God helped her in the, on that day. But she never made a commitment to him. She married, she had three children, and uh, eventually she divorced. Then her ex-husband went to jail. And there he received the Bible study from the Adventist member. And his ex-wife, Sally Jo, also studied the Bible from his pastor. The studies went well. She accepted the truth presented and prepared for baptism. But there's one, one problem. There's always one problem when you decide to get baptized. Decide to get baptized, always one problem they have faced. You know. And that was uh, smoking. She had a very strong smoking habit. No matter how much, uh, how many cigarettes she threw away, she went out and bought a cigarette. After weeks of this battle, and uh, one Friday night, the pastor felt impressed to tell her, Sally Jo, tomorrow is the day. Tomorrow is a baptism. But the baptistry is full and waiting. Give me your cigarettes uh, for the last time. So she did it. Then uh, they prayed together. And after the pastor left, she went to the corner store and bought some cigarettes. That night, she prayed, she smoked, she cried until four o'clock in the morning. And when she finally fell asleep, she had a dream. And in that dream, she saw Jesus standing on her right side and Satan standing on her left. And Jesus turned to Satan and said, leave her alone. And that moment, leave her alone. When that voice was, he, she heard the desire to smoke, just left and never returned. She had victory in Jesus and she was baptized on that Sabbath morning at Pendleton Adventist Church in Oregon. And because of this incredible change that happened in Sally Joe's life, and within the next year, within the next year, and 17 other members of family uh, gave their hearts to Jesus, and all of them were baptized. And you can imagine the joy of our grandmother who had prayed persistently. You know, the persistent, persistent prayer is very important for us. We should never give up. I, I, you know, I have prayer, you know, one, one very specific prayer that I've been praying every day for more than, I don't know how many years, more than 20, 10 years. I haven't got the clear answer yet. I don't want to give up because I've been praying for more than 10 years. I don't want to stop it. I don't want to give, give, give up. I, I just keep praying and praying and praying. And no, one church member in, in Toronto, she had a cancer. She asked me to pray and my wife too. So we pray every day, every day. And just a few weeks ago, she gave me a message that no, our tu my tumor is getting shrinking, shrinking so little by little. So 
Pastor Nakagawa, thank you for your prayers. You and your wife, Mutsumi, so doing, so helping us, so it's helping me, and thank you very much. So we just keep praying, pray, pray, you know, more than a, more, since I think two or three years, I think. Prayer will be, our sincere prayer will be brought to a throne of a Heavenly Father. No? Even though we don't pray in a, with a beautiful words, Ellen White said, you know, Jesus will change the words of our petitions you know, in a the very beautiful way that our Heavenly Father will accept. You know, intercessory prayer through Jesus, you know, by Jesus, is made, we make our prayers very effective. So, my brothers and sisters, never give up. We should keep praying. Say that God does not say, ask once and you shall receive. He bids us ask, unwearingly persist in prayer. The persistent asking brings the petitioner into a more earnest attitude and gives him an increased desire to receive the thing for which he asked. And Christ said to Martha, at the grave of Lazarus, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Would you like to see the glory, glory of God? If so, let us trust him and persistently ask him in prayers. You know, Jesus, our savior, sacrificed his precious life to save us. That proves that he loves us. He wants to demonstrate his love to us, so he listens to our prayers. Why should we not, should we not pray to him every day? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 said, Praying all this with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication from, for all saints. If we honestly pray, Jesus will accomplish infinitely more than we ask, we might ask or think. May God bless you and keep you safe and help you to give a persistent prayer to the Lord Jesus so that you'll see the beautiful glory of God in your life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us a holy day to worship you. We thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. And this Jesus, our savior Jesus, carried our sins on himself and he was punished for our sins so that we could live an eternal life. Thank you for showing us the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us proof that our prayers are always heard into the ears of the Heavenly Father. Lord, give us faith. Increase our faith so that we can continue to pray and continue to be 
men and women of faith so we can be ready for the coming of the lord jesus christ thank you that you've been given the church many blessings although we cannot see each other face to face we still have a chance uh, opportunity to have worship on zoom and to talk to each other on zoom lord continue to bless us bless our families and give us good health and okay? physical health and also spiritual health so that we can be a good disciple of jesus to be a uh, witness of your love. And thank you for hearing prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>